Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Rise. Your time is now. Thank you. You may be seated. What a welcome. I'm used to talking about the, you know, the economy, what, what, here, there, everywhere. Let me make sure. Don't overshoot my time. So good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Wow. Lady Norena. I, in fact, I need to salute from the right side. This is serious. You're doing something big here. Huh? Congratulations. To all the other speakers, great to be in your company. Esther Chungu, I hope, I hope you saw me. I mean, I, I've got some rhythm, so I made good use of it. Tenacity, dancing in the storm, rise. That's my topic. I always start presentations with disclaimers. My disclaimers today, no, I'll behave. Number one, I have quite a number of questions to ask. So in case you think you are just, I'm coming to just talk to you, you're going to be asking yourself and yourselves a lot of questions. Number two, Dancing in the storm. I'll use the word storm and crisis interchangeably. But what does this mean? And I see all of you. Some of you may be having a good time. Crisis? What crisis? Others have been beaten trampled on by life and are wondering, surely this is too much for one person to bear. But you are all in the same audience. So my message, this is the challenge with messages like this, is that it has to resonate with all of you. I will try. So when I got the theme, I've been, it's come at a time which was very busy. Yeah? The, the minister read the budget. I'm a professional. We don't sleep after the budget is read, trying to appear more knowledgeable about the budget than the person who wrote it. Yeah, no, you see, what he meant was, he told you what he meant, but we will try and tell you what he really meant. So I actually didn't think too hard about this topic. Yesterday, I was in uh, ShopRite, and what I do when I'm given a topic, I have to internalize it. It has to, I have to become one with the topic. Dancing in the storm. And I was at the queue, having bought biltong and dried mangoes. Dancing in the storm. And I've got an anthem for different seasons of my life. And at the moment, my anthem, when I'm ready to give up, Lord, you won't let me go. You keep holding me when I'm ready to give up, Lord, you won't let me go. You keep holding me. Don't worry, even if you don't sing, it's my anthem. And I started to move, dancing. You know, I started to imagine. Yeah, in the, in the queue. You won't let me go. You've got me. I know there's safety in your arms. You won't let me go. And I was imagining, 
I was imagining it's raining. You have to get into the topic. What does it mean to be dancing in the storm? Not the rain, the storm. Never give up, Lord, you won't let me. Lord, you keep holding me when I'm ready to give up, Lord, you won't let me. Go, you keep holding me. And then it occurred to me, we want to get to a point where we are celebrating the crisis. You are celebrating the storm. Your prayer is, Lord, thank you for my storm. How? Turn to your neighbor and tell them, Thank the Lord for your storm. Hallelujah, church. How? This storm that seems to have come to crush me, I say thank you for the storm. And I'm dancing. I mean, I don't, I'm not a very good dancer, but I've got some rhythm, eh? So even if the song is there, I won't be out of sync. Or we're still, you're dancing in the storm. So by the time we're done with this session, we want to get up and dance in the storm. Now, reality check. Uncertainty. Disruption. Crisis are inevitable. They are coming whether you like it or yes. So the prayer, Lord, please take away the storm is the wrong one because the storm is coming. What is your storm? Yes, I expected pin drop silence here. And that is what is happening. What is your storm? I'm going to tell you a story. In 2020, I got promoted. Became the chief executive at PwC. So, yeah, <laughs> we are arriving. I came up with a 100-day plan. And then, lo and behold... <coughs> As we started implementing it, COVID arrived. My HR manager is here somewhere. Ngoza, where are you? You're there? Yes. So if you think I'm telling stories, you can ask her. So people start getting sick in the office. Okay. So people start getting sick. Okay, so what do we do? No, we are a listening firm. We care about our people. All of you go and work from home. We know we, we just want you to be safe. I don't know where my 100-day plan is two years later. And then, now they're sitting at home. And I'm like, oh my, there's load shedding at home. They can't work. How am I going to pay them? They'll be safe, but broke. So now I have to address them, to tell them that actually you have to come back into the office. But I just told you that, you know, your safety is our priority. So call the meeting. No, you see, uh, we will endeavor to ensure the safety of all of our people, etc., uh, etc. Et so you have uncertainty everywhere. You think you've got it figured out, life throws something at you. I came up with a frame of thinking which I called life is like a case study. And what it says is, how many of us have written an exam where they give you pre-exam material before you go in? A case study. Okay, just if you haven't, after I explain, you understand. Don't worry. So what they do is they give you some background information and you are meant to study it before your exam. 
When you go in the exam, they give you additional information and questions. Now let's see if you are an attentive class. If in the exam, the only thing you do is focus on the information you were given before exam day, will you pass? Kupes, I can't hear you. Will you pass? If you concentrate only on what you are given in the exam, will you pass? You must combine the two. So then I said to myself, everything happening around me, COVID, the country and its economy, people resigning, is my pre-exam case study material. After I've looked at it, after I've acknowledged that indeed I've got a crisis, I must ask myself these questions. Okay, now what? When I'm talking to myself, I take it a step higher. I say, so what? But I can't tell my staff members, okay, so what? Because they'll say, he's very rude. Turn to your neighbor, ask them, what next? Remember, where are we going? Dancing in the storm. So the first word was actually very apt. Tenacity. And it's a journey. Yeah? I've got three steps. Since, since I'm a professional, I need to give you some framework or some model. So this is Chibuye's three-step model for dancing in the storm. Hallelujah, church. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can even bring an offering. So Lady Norena helped me with step one. Tenacity. What does it mean to be tenacious? The quality of continuing to exist, especially in difficult circumstances. Persistence. Okay? So back to definitions. Continuing to exist. I also came across a terminology called tensile strength. That is the ability of a material to resist fracture or breaking when being pulled apart. We're going somewhere. Hallelujah, church. Tensile strength. How do you increase your ability to withstand being pulled apart? How do you ensure you don't fracture or rupture? Not in rapture, I'm a Bible. Just break apart. There's an experiment done in 1950 by a gentleman called Dr. Kurt Richard. And what he did was he put rats in a jar, okay, in jars, and left them. They tread water for 15 minutes and died, okay? Then they put other jars, they put rats in there, they tread water in 15 minutes. When they were just about to start sinking, they were pulled out, dried, and they were put back in. On their second attempt, they tread water for 60 hours. It was an experiment that confirmed that hope builds tenacity. The theory is that because they hoped they would be rescued, they continued to tread water one day. You know, 60 hours, you can even say it in days. It makes sense, eh? Mm, 24 hours. Two days, that's 48 hours. When you're getting to 60 hours, you're in your third day. I'm not sure if they resurrected afterwards, but... So tenacity is built on hope. And that is where we are going. Our task is to build hope. But I have a problem with tensile strength and tenacity as the destination. Because remember, as you are being pulled apart, if the pressure remains there, at some point, 
there will be deformity even if you don't break. So the issue is, how do you come back to your normal state? Because a persistent state of pressure or pulling will deform you, no matter how much strength you have. Okay? So how do we come back? And enter step two of the model, resilience. Tenacity, you survive. Resilience, you recover. Resilience. The ability to recover from difficult circumstances quickly. Remember our destination is where? In the storm. So how do I go from simply resisting fracture to coming back to my normal state in crisis because I need to dance in the storm. Resilience is about building your capacity, your ability to absorb, your ability to dissipate what is happening around you. Uh, dissipate to scatter. The pressure comes at you this way, you scatter it. You go back to your normal state. Or you absorb it. So step one is what? Step two? Step three? The will to win. Thrive. And that is our destination. So between tenacity and thriving, there's a step in between called resilience. Lord, thank you for my storm. Are we praying that prayer yet? So step one, let's now go to the practicals. Step one, building tenacity. In this storm, and some will say if we are talking about, because storms are different, eh? I'm sure some here, uh, COVID was a great thing. Hmm? People became overnight successes selling face masks. Yes. Someone who has built a house of face masks. Whilst everyone was... <coughs> it was an opportunity. So in the crisis, in the storm, there are some who are dying, some who are just surviving, and some who are thriving. The question is, which one are you? is your own self-assessment. We're trying to build tenacity. Number two, you must be optimistic. Remember, tenacity is built on what? It's built on what? You need to respond. Tenacity is built on so you must be optimistic. My friends, if you declare, oh Lord, I'm finished. Mwevantu achapwa. As you have declared, so shall it be. What are you telling yourself? What is your Message to yourself as you rise every morning. Ah, ise ni so chabe. Kose ni onalebo. I hope they edit that out. Eh? Edit it out. Number three, 
do what you must to survive. I heard Madame Ruth telling us about getting someone into her business. They've come to discipline her. Stop spending money here. Stop spending money. Save costs. Do what you must to survive. Obviously, that doesn't include going to deal in drugs. Eh? We're just talking about what is legal. And one can say, no, now he's advocate. No, no, no. no. <laughs> we have a certain framework eh? in Coupes. Eh? So according to the Coupes framework, if the Coupes framework does not permit you, please do not do what you must to survive. That is my disclaimer. We are building tenacity. Building tenacity. Tenacity is built on hope. Dying, surviving, thriving. Which are you? I'm finished. Or they ain't seen nothing yet. Or even better, is it here? My time is now. Resilience. So, I hope, look at your neighbor. Do they look more tenacious? Eh? They look a bit more tenacious. Eh? A bit more hopeful. Is, uh, no, Esther, this is how tenacity looks. Yeah. In case you are wondering. So how do we start building resilience? The ability to recover. Let me state the obvious. When you are in a crisis... Your margin of, one of the things that crisis does is that your margin of error reduces. Okay? If you make a mistake, the costs are greater. If you make a mistake, it takes longer to recover. So what am I saying? <laughs> Avoid mistakes. How? That's why you have this entire network. Discuss, consult. Have you ever heard the expression, measure twice, cut once? How do you ensure you reduce the chances of making a mistake? Consult. We're building resilience. Number two, find a silver lining at all costs. Since I'm, support, and I must, I'm an accountant who masquerades as an economic expert, but uh, because I know a thing or two more than everyone else, everyone just yes, 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 Mr. Chibwe. When you go on radio, they ask you a question, mm, this one. And now you see, no, I need to give you the point. You confuse the interviewer. You haven't even answered the question. No, that was a powerful answer. Yes, yes. I masquerade as an economic expert. <coughs> so find a silver lining. Where am I going? There are people, no, Russia, Ukraine, eh, what? Someone is saying, do you know that what the price of wheat is likely to be in a few years' time? Let me start my wheat for me. I've given you an example of COVID. <coughs> time to buy, to start dealing in masks. The people that inspire me most on silver linings in fact, even when, if you ask Ngoz, I should tell you, I did a, a paper on them and circulated to the office. You know those guys who operate at the flyover? Eh? Mm -hmm. Those dudes, I love them. They are one of my inspirations in business. A drop of rain now. Look at the sky, how clear it is. If there's a drop of rain now, just one, and you go there, what will you find them with? If Zambia is playing today, you find them with? In fact, the rain one is, is, is funny because you even find them with wipers. Say, ah, gentlemen, how am I going to change wipers here? So the question is, what do you see? Ah, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. Okay. As you have seen. What do you see? I 
And the thing about sight is that it's the most proactive of all your senses. Okay? Because I can see my image at the back there. Very powerful no, on this side. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> this one now. Uh, Our graphics were not enhanced. That's not how I really look. Mm. If I didn't have a microphone and you were standing at the back, you might not, I might not hear you. Okay? If you've got a powerful cologne and you're standing at the back, I definitely won't appreciate it. You, you, even if you're standing at the back there and you want to cause me harm and you start throwing punches in my direction, there's nothing that will happen. But I can see you from here. Sight allows you to go beyond the horizon, beyond what is obvious here. What else do you observe? I was on the radio the other day, someone calls and says, there's nothing in this budget for SMEs. They say, hey. I almost asked, hey. <coughs> have you read it? Because if you see nothing, indeed, if you haven't read it, obviously, if you don't know, then there's nothing for you. Mm -hmm. What do you see? We're building resilience. Then focus on what you can control. A lot of the stress that we encounter is because we try and deal with things we can't control. Okay, the price of fuel has gone up. You know, even the price of fuel now, eh? the price of fuel, the price of fuel, the price of fuel. Okay. <laughs> so what? This is Stephen Covey's focusing on your circle of influence as opposed to your circle of concern. For what is happening which you have no ability to control should not be your primary focus. What is your reaction to it? What is it you can control? We're building resilience. Build a support system for recovery purposes. And what I see here encourages me greatly. And then what is your coping mechanism when the storm comes? Do you now sit and cry in the rain? My friend, you get a cold, eh? Pneumonia is coming. Mm -hmm. Plus depression. Mm. Or do you put an umbrella on your head? Me, I ride my bicycle at 04 in the morning in the middle of nowhere. Helps me to get things out of my head. What is your coping mechanism? This one is interesting. Thicken your skin. The 20 minutes you spent upset because of the comment on your hair, was it worth it? And here, nobody here gets upset about their hair or their shoes. Or, uh. I'll give you what happened to me. Uh, in, because we're talking about resilience. Eh? Res well, I'm talking about you being careful what you allow in. Let's put it this way. This life has got enough problems for you to be stressing about what someone has written on your Facebook post. You know what I mean? Eh? Mm -hmm. No, have you seen a uh, crisis? Hey, my friend, eh? mm. I've got enough uh, on my plate. I'll tell you another story. So I become a partner, okay? and I was 33 at the time, 32 and a half to be specific, and very zealous, you know, uh, no, no, we're here to take over the world. But it so happened at the same time, a few of the other partners left, okay? So it actually was a crisis situation because, eh, so PwC now is in the hands of young people. Will it survive? Okay. So I campaigned to become president of the Zambia Institute of Chartered Accountants at the time. And there was a poster that was released which simply said, accounting needs 
mature leadership. Okay? So my campaign team was in up in arms. They can't be saying this. Hey, what, what, what? I said, ah, gentlemen, it's true. The accounting profession needs mature leadership. Age and maturity are two different things. They are not talking about... Okay? Lo and behold, well, I didn't win, but uh, that's a story for another day. I got to meet some very high-level people, okay? Uh, and just by virtue of saying I'm from PwC, some people give you appointments. So we go with my colleagues, and we enter this room, and we find a gentleman. Good morning, sir. We're here from PwC. We're here to discuss. Does it mean PwC does not have people with gray hair now? Eh? What is this now? Just boys. He actually said, just boys and girls in PwC. You know, you need seasoned leadership. So we come out of that meeting. Okay. Interesting. And this, what I'm telling you is important because you encounter, what I'm talking about is bias. Eh? I've encountered bias from an age perspective. But it's one of the best things that has ever happened to me. And I'll explain shortly why. I go to another meeting, this time with a lady, also very powerful. So, so I sit here, she's sitting there. My boss, who was then country senior partner, is sitting here. So we're from PwC, you know, we've just come to pay a Excuse me, who is in charge here? Okay, so the meeting stops. My boss says, no, you know, the, the young people, they are the future. So when we go to back to the office, we now have a crisis meeting. Guys, the market is clearly saying there's a problem at PwC. They are just boys and girls there. I said, ladies and gentlemen, this is fantastic. Because what they have done is that they have lowered their expectation of us. So for us to step over this lowered expectation and now to be seen to be outperforming is an opportunity that we must grab. The next week, the gentleman who called us boys and girls, I heard him make a statement on news. I wrote a paper for him. Just three pages, telling him why what he was saying was absolute junk. Not in those exact words, of course. <laughs> but that if he proceeded on that part, part trajectory, the consequences for him and his organization would be a disaster. I got a call. Uh, Chibuya, yes. Uh, can you come to my office? No problem. What are you saying? I'm saying... Here, have you seen your, dis, your declaration here? What it means? You see, I've done this for the last 15 years. What I'm telling you is... Da, 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 da. Oh, the following day, he was retracting his statement. So I said, if, my sub, if I'm happy with my substance and who I am, I do not care what they have to say. It's not arrogance. It's just being, I have to be careful what I allow no, now they are saying we are finished. Guys, we are just youngsters. What do we do? What am I going to do about my age? I go to NRC and change it. Thicken your skin. For me, one of the best things that ever happened to me was bias. Because ah, so this is how you perceive me. Ah, oh, wonderful. We'll sort you out. Just give us a bit of time. Today. Before he does anything significant, he calls me for a chat. The alternative would be, yeah, we, I, think, I think we indeed were finished, and you shrink into your corner. I'm talking about building resilience, thickening your skin. Facebook, what? I mean, I do a lot on social media. Eh? Sometimes, eh? Or after I post, I don't even read. 
I've got a team that manages my social media. Sometimes they're the ones responding. Sometimes I say, ah, what about this one? Say, yeah, we'll say this level of ignorance. Ah, let's just move on with life. There are some people that you will never embrace. So do not bother your life with yourself with them. We are on a journey though. Resilience is not the final destination. Dancing in the storm. That is about purposing in your heart. I am going to win. So how do we do this? What is your strength? Your key strength. What is it you are designed to do on this earth? Don't tell me finishing Ubonga at home. K for knowledge. U for what? What are you uniquely designed to do? What are you uniquely designed to do? Have you figured it out? Let me tell you, eh? I, also, I haven't yet figured it out completely. I'll tell you why. Because the question that I try to answer every day is in 400 years, should the Lord not have come? The people who will be there in 400 years, how will they know that there was... And I, you know, the one we used to do at secondary school, I just had to feature. How will they know that there was Andrew Chibwe who walked on the face of the earth? That's, my, that's the question that troubles me. I'm trying to, I'm on the journey to figuring it out. But what we're talking about is your unique strength. What opportunities are there even in the storm? Maybe we should do something to help people understand what's in the budget. Eh? Let me give you one for free. Last year, duties on importing things, I think, was reduced to like $500. Well, maybe some of you were never even paying duty in the first place. You should pay your taxes. Eh? That thing can mess you up. That is something for everyone who is trading. Your hair, which you sell, provides some. I'm sure it's within that threshold. What opportunities do you see? Stretch. We're talking about winning. Winning is not just arriving. One of the things I did during COVID is I started social media, a lot of activity. Yeah? And I came up with different series. And those series actually just uh, tabulate my journey of coping with the environment. <coughs> and I said to myself, so the first series I had was called Managing Through Crisis. Then I had another cr series called Refuse to Lose. And I spent a bit of time on it and explained it what. And I said, no, but you see, there's a problem with simply refusing to lose. If you refuse to lose, and it's a game of football, you could end up with a draw. You still haven't won. And I came up with a series afterwards called Playing to Win. And one of the things that I spend a lot of time on is believing that as you are setting your goals, they must stretch you. Not you're going for an exam. Say, no, if we're 50, jump, 50. Hey. You know, that one, as though they're closing the door, then you just sneak in, your jacket is caught. No. Why is it important to stretch? Because it starts to affect the way that you are operating. If you're aiming for 90, Versus those aiming for 50. We can see them at university. Eh? Look at him. What does he, who does he think he is? My friend, he's going. you're comfortable with your 50. The risk with aiming for 50 is you end up at 49. Even with rounding, you still fail. 
And that is what you call, what I call the margin of achievement. If I'm aiming for 90, I come in at 85, 70. I've still failed by my standards, but have I really failed? You've heard the expression, aim for the stars. If you miss, at least you aim for the moon. If you miss, at least you land amongst the stars. We're talking about playing to win. Be relentless. Not the first challenge. I'm sure if we ask Lady Norena, Lady Norena, this journey in Coupes from when you started to today, what hurdles have you had to overcome? Can you imagine? I heard her on radio. She told me she, the first Coupes meeting had uh, with Yuyo Kambi Kambi, I was listening, eh? had nine people. Maybe she had invested, she brought the Esther Chungu to sing, the barbecue was set for 100 people, and then nine showed up, said, no. I think, eh? let me try something else. Would we be here today? That one is an easy one for us to appreciate. Now, Lady Norena, I'm sure if we asked her properly, you've seen all these people, eh? Zanako, what? I suspect she's been to all these doors knocking. No, you see, coupes, coupes, ah, coupes, what? You know, coupes. Eh, all these are cutting costs, if you ask them. She went to, tr to convince them to give money overcoming obstacles, for us to be here, to just be enjoying. No, but this venue, I think we could have done better. <laughs> yeah. What obstacles have you faced? And how are you responding? They say get out of the comfort zone. But my mentor, a last Pimo Junior told me it's not actually the comfort zone which is the problem. Don't we want to be comfortable? Who here does not want to be comfortable? So how can a zone where you are comfortable be a bad thing? The issue with the comfort zone, what you are actually describing is familiarity. You're just used. This is how we do things. My friend, the whole world has moved to digital now. If you don't have a digital way of contacting your customers, your clients, you're not doing anything. Which is why in the office they tell me, no, you spend too much time on social media. Hey, what, what, what? I say, my friend, eh? if I told you how many people have called me from these same things you think I'm playing games. And I'm, at work, I'm very deliberate. Eh? I do the things from seven to eight. I stop. So that people don't say, you know, our boss is, what can even tell us about spending time on Facebook? He's always on Facebook. My friend, do you know that I've paid some of your salaries from what I'm doing there? <laughs> yes. So, if you're resisting change, you're still doing things the same way, how do you change? Pursue relevance. The optimal way to overcome any challenge or to be successful is where you become sought after. You're just sitting there. No, no, no. If Esther Chungu doesn't come, we are cancelling the event. What would Esther have done to persuade someone that no, even Pompey can't do the job? Why should I employ you? No, how many people are you looking for? Ah. No, you know, I've never worked before. It's a graduate recruitment. Nobody has ever worked. Why are you telling me things I already know? Why should I come looking for you, 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 you? Your customer. You know, this, the easiest way to understand this is look at, uh, we're discussing iPhone 14, eh? If they showed you a picture of the iPhone 14 launch in the US, you come and find some people slept, eh? waiting for the, the shop to open. They put the, just waiting. They have the 13, 13 Pro, now there's 14, they want it. They don't even know what the price is. What causes a product to get to such a point where people don't care about the details? What are you doing so that we come looking? No, 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 no. Uh, ask Ingoza is here. When we look sometimes on LinkedIn, you see, mm, 
this CV is powerful. Ngoza, interview next week. Hired. No long story. No, you, you can't get a job if you don't know people. Okay. At least put a LinkedIn thing and tell us why, how you are changing the world so that you catch our attention. What are you doing on Facebook? Mind you, we, we check those things. Eh? Very soon, we'll have an algorithm. You know, I work for a global firm. Eh? These things are not far away. Where we just key in your thing, it produces a report. Let me tell you an interesting one. There is someone who, this one is actually a sad story. Eh? During the campaigns, election campaigns, I don't know what comment I made, but it wasn't even election related. I was talking about the economy, but people perceived it a certain way. This lady came and was actually quite vulgar on my post. She came back later and she was asking me for help. She has no food in her house. That was uh, three months ago. I sent her something. I was highly tempted to remind her. But I just said, no, people learn. So what are you doing? What, why should we come after you? You yourself should know, you should know, these are my unique selling points. Me, at least I know what I think they are. You can have your views on how good they are, that's your views. Me, I've got what I think my strengths are. I think I can, can speak very well, pr pretty well, pretty well. I'm not intimidated by a crowd. I can, you know, just, just flow. Except preaching. Mm, preaching, mm -mm. that one is a higher anointing. Now let's make this practical as I conclude. I'll give you a few statements. Our destination is to... Even make your own music. Actually, I was tempted to give the DJ some, the same song. Say, no, no, no. I'll make my own music. Even if I'm not Esther Chung, it's okay. You've only ever failed when you give up. So don't give up. I'm not saying you don't fail. Failing, we all fail. But don't give up. Even in the storm. Use your downtime productively. We're talking about resilience, tenacity. I'm currently unemployed. You know, I've been jobless for, for three years now. Okay, okay, so what have you been doing in this period? Well, get a, you, you can get a degree off YouTube now. You know that, eh? Go and read something. Every day you get a... My bundles just see a chip on Facebook and Instagram. No. Every day, learn something new. You know, I become a... I'll give you an example. We get through this... Uh, 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 I started trying to get onto social media, you know, a bit more visible. And the idea was, I can't go and meet clients to tell them about PwC. So I need them. At least when I meet them for the first time, they tell me, ah... You're the chap who's been, yes, 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 it's me, it's me. Okay, okay, eh, yes, how can I help you? No, you see, we see you're doing something. We think we can help you. Ah, no problem, just go and see that. And that's what has happened, okay? Someone saw me when in my early days, eh, you post, you post. They contacted me, you know, I can help you with your graphics design, what, what. Okay, no problem, show me. I have someone on my payroll who does graphics design for over a year. And it's my cost. What are you doing in your downtime? Ah, things are hard. They're hard. We are finished. Go and learn how to cook something. Maybe next time Lady Norena has a function like this, you will do the catering for us. Eh? You even tell her, no, just give me a 50% down payment. I'll sort out. Here are my samples for my muffins. What are you doing with your downtime? Sometimes, because let's not pretend that everyone is a pure optimist. Or, let me not lead to the fact that some people here have encountered real challenges that even if you told me about them, I'd say, mm, Yango, uh, at Pastor Gladys, let's go and see Pastor, Pastor Gladys. This one is a Pastor Gladys question. This, these are Pastor Gladys questions, eh? <laughs> no, not, uh, not me. So let's not pretend that everyone 
can just miraculously get up and say, oh, now we are dancing in the storm. Ah, thank you, Lord, for the storm. No. Think, no, what has he been smoking? What you must do is focus on your very next move. Pastor Gladys was talking about it when in a slightly different context. You can't deal with the whole day, deal with the hour. I can't deal with the hour, deal with 30 minutes, 15 minutes. What is your next move? You have slept enough. Okay, now go brush your teeth. <clears throat> Good. Okay, now what do I do next? Okay, let me watch a YouTube video or something. Let me just call and ask. Let me volunteer to help organize this. You know, you can put that on your CV. Those are what you call life experiences that are relevant. Focus on your next move. Remember to be optimistic. Ask, what do you see? Rather than, what don't you? Go the extra mile. There's no traffic there. I attended a conference here as a speaker. And I saw some guy, he's the one connecting the, the stereo, he's doing this, he's doing that, doing that. So I thought he was actually a worker just in the complex. Then when the function started, he was the one that was coming to introduce me with the other teams. Ah, dude, what are you doing? No, I just volunteer, shan, 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 shan. Hey, my friend, eh? give me your number. Give me your number. This attitude, I like it. I can work with this attitude. Give me your number. The rest is history. The Chinese used two brush strokes to write the word crisis. One stroke stands for danger. The other one, opportunity. Meaning, in danger, we look out for opportunities. All of what I've said is immaterial if you can't win the battle in your mind. Lord, thank you for the storm. I'm dancing in the storm. Lady Norena, this, this does not be talking, talking anyhow. Eh? This is actually in my notes. It's not from after I heard what Madame Ruth said. This, in fact, I think this is the reason I was late today. I went cycling. And I said, ah, I've got a good idea. PwC, let's start an internship for your girls. Eh? Because as there, those who are interested in a career in the profession, you come, there are people who we've brought as interns. We failed to release them when their contracts ended. So, ah, it's already three months. Ah, I'm a person in Chito. You come and get some experience. We do 10, 15, we'll figure it out. I had a conversation with this. We bring grade 12s. Eh? So surely, I'm sure here there are more than people who are grade 12s. Let's do that. Yeah, so you discuss with Ngoza there. Next week, Malcolm, my HR partner, we sign something, then we structure it. And... Eh? People start dancing in the storm. That one, I don't even need to consult anyone. You know, it's like the way that when the president is talking, people are taking notes. Eh? That one, done deal. Let's move. All right? You won't let me go. You've got me. I know there's safety in your arms. You won't let me go dancing in the storm. Thank you.